Live from KSAT 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Coming up, the latest on the vaccine and when to expect another vaccine to be approved by the FDA. I'm Andrew Dimbert in Washington, D.C. with the very latest. And outside with live cam, 39 degrees at the airport. Any changes to our weather pattern in the coming day or so? We'll get Mike's midweek forecast. Hey, good morning. It is Wednesday, December 16th. Thanks for joining us. It is uh, 39 as we said out there. I, I can't believe you're not freezing to death right now. Oh, I'm great. You're good? <laughs> yeah, because well, we're inside. You're I inside. Have the coats outside. Yeah, yeah, but it's usually like we have a wind chill going in here most months out of the year. Agreed, Mike Osterhage? It's either hot or cold. Yeah. 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 So anyway, uh, boy, the wind <laughs> last night. Speaking of wind chills. Yeah, I cracked the window last night to make sure I slept cool. Uh -huh. And I mean, it was singing a tune coming yeah, through the window. It was definitely shaking up the trees. Hopefully all of your uh, Christmas decorations are still in place this morning. And the wind has finally settled down a little bit. We've got some clear skies, uh, still a breeze out there. Maybe five, 10 miles per hour. Lost Maples, a little bit more of a, a breeze. Not too bad. Uh, we'll still have it, slightly breezier conditions around here this morning. Uh, temperatures below freezing already at Bernie, uh, 39 in Tarpley, 30 39 out there at the airport, and then there is a little bit of a wind chill to deal with. Feels like 26 both Lost Maples as well as uh, in Kerrville, and uh, we've got a little bit of uh, mountain cedar that was showing up. Not too bad. It actually went down from the previous days, but it's going to be interesting to see what happened after the winds were blowing overnight and when the update account comes out later on this morning. I think we continue to drop down a few more degrees this morning, making it down to the mid 30s. Obviously, there will be some freezing temperatures out there, and then later on today, 57 for a high. So. Jacket's still a pretty good idea. Maybe a little bit of a rain chance coming in here in the next couple of days. I wouldn't get too excited about it. Details on that in just a few minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Here's Officer Nick Solis. Thanks, Mike. Good morning, everyone. Hope you're having a great start to your Wednesday morning. All right, looks good right now. No construction out there. According to my friends at TransGuide, no accidents. Things look good. Let's go straight to the TransGuide cameras. 410 at Broadway right now. No cars on the roadway there. One, two, maybe. And uh, we'll do one more here. Let's see what we have. I-10 at Hildebrand looking very very smooth. Off to a good start. Mark Steph, back to you. Thank you, Nick. A third full day of vaccinations will be underway. A second potential vaccine could be given emergency approval by the end of the week. Meanwhile, the country is recording nearly one and a half million new coronavirus cases and hospitals are once again being pushed to the limit. Here's ABC's Andrew Dimbert in Washington. One. After those historic first shots, more vaccines arrive at hospitals across the country. In hard hit El Paso, Texas, the University Medical Center welcoming the arrival of nearly 3,000 doses. At least 47 states have already started vaccinating healthcare workers, with Oregon, Arizona, and Tennessee handing out their first shots by Thursday. Vaccine deliveries expected to expand even further in the coming days, with patients in 1,100 nursing homes getting their shots by next week. And this week, a second vaccine from Moderna could be authorized by the FDA. The government ready to ship out millions of doses is the moment it gets approval. We know that uh, we're going to ship just a little bit uh, short of 6 million doses out to the American people, uh, and we're shipping it to 3,285 locations uh, across the country. For those on the front line, it can't come soon enough. This moving photo showing healthcare workers at New York's Presbyterian Hospital holding hands in solidarity, ready to receive their shots together. The unprecedented nationwide vaccine program comes as hospitalizations from COVID-19 are reaching record levels. And experts say the numbers will likely get worse in the coming months. In L.A. County, there are fewer than 100 ICU beds. I want you guys to all shift your mindsets to disaster mode. In just the last 24 hours, about 2,900 more Americans died from the coronavirus. The death toll in the U.S. now topping 300,000 as those vaccines are being dispensed. In New York, the mayor says the city may go into a full shutdown again after Christmas. I don't say it with anything but sorrow but I do think it's needed. And in the next wave of vaccinations, first responders, teachers, and food workers, followed by people over the age of 65, and then it'll go to those with pre-existing conditions. Andrew Dimber, ABC News, Washington. Today, San Antonio Veterans Affairs is set to vaccinate its first employee and veteran. It will happen at the Audie L. Murphy Memorial Veterans Hospital at 9 o'clock this morning. The Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine was already administered at Joint Base San Antonio Lackland. Brook Army Medical Center and the Air Force 59th Medical Wing were among the first to receive shipments. The first shot was given Monday to an Air Force doctor.
The latest coronavirus numbers in Bear County are similar to what we saw back in June as the summer surge in cases was increasing. In its latest report, Metro Health says 120 new COVID-19 patients were admitted to hospitals in just 24 hours. 800 COVID-19 patients are now in our local hospitals as of this morning. Take a look here how the numbers compare to June. On the left, current numbers. On the right, the numbers Bear County experienced back on June 28th. Next day, about June 29th, about 80 more COVID patients were admitted and numbers continued to rise. Our seven day average also increasing back towards the 1000 mark right now. It stands at 943, which is an increase of 10. Six new deaths were also reported. A San Antonio mother who says a hit and run driver killed her son in Holotas, asking that driver to come forward now. Now her son, 36 year old Jerry Sanchez, was walking from work when police say he was hit. His mother, Valerie Sanchez, said she searched up and down Highway 16 to find him so she could pick him up. And a day later, she said she would learn that his body was found by a passerby located near Our Lady of Guadalupe Catholic Church. No, I can't understand if they thought it was a, like an animal, a deer or something. The people usually like, oh, it's just a dog, it's a deer. How can you not see it was a person? They say he was up there. So he had to, that person had to have seen him. At this time, police say they have no evidence that could point them in the right direction of a possible suspect. Sanchez's mother is urging anyone with any information to contact Lotus Police. Right now it's 436, still 39 degrees. And still ahead, a first look at a special interview between ABC's Robin Roberts and Vice President-elect Kamala Harris. San Antonio Spurs facing the Rockets last night at the Toyota Center. We have highlights just ahead. And taking a look outside with a live cam, a nice cold December morning at 39 degrees. We're probably going to have another cold morning tomorrow. We're going to check in with Mike to see how cold in just a bit. And welcome back. It is 439. A month's long deadlock on the second COVID relief bill may be about to be over. Top congressional leaders on both sides expressed confidence they are getting close to a deal. Key sticking points have been aid for states and local governments wanted by Democrats and a liability shield wanted by Republicans that would protect businesses from being sued if customers or employees contract COVID. Both sides may have backed off those demands. No deal has been finalized yet, but an announcement could come before Congress recesses for the holidays at the end of the week. A former Houston police captain could go to jail for 20 years for assaulting a man he thought was carrying illegal ballots. Prosecutors say a group paid 63 year old Mark Anthony Aguirre to help investigate alleged voter fraud in the area. He allegedly spent four days watching a man the private group believed was an election fraud, quote unquote, mastermind. Well, prosecutors say a Gary ran his SUV into the back of the man's truck, then forced him to the ground at gunpoint. A police officer's body cam caught the entire incident. Turns out the man was actually an air conditioning repair man. A Gary is in jail on a $30,000 bond facing charges of assault with a deadly weapon. The biggest East Coast winter storm in years is set to hit the Mid-Atlantic and Northeast starting today. Up to two feet of snow is expected in some areas. Forecasters warn that this major storm will hit hard and fast, causing major disruptions or even shutdowns in travel. People can also expect shipping delays and power outages. Some areas may pick up their heaviest snowfall in several years, rivaling December records. Now, the Weather Service has posted winter storm warnings, watches and advisories from the northeastern Georgia all the way to Cape Cod, Massachusetts, a distance of more than 850 miles. Last night, San Antonio Spurs took on the Houston Rockets at the Toyota Center. Lonnie Walker IV had nine points in the first finish with a team-high 17. Spurs found themselves down three with 10 seconds to go when DeMar DeRozan drains a jumper. And then that gets the Spurs within one at the break. Spurs go down in the fourth. Spurs and uh, Silver and Black did not give up. Uh, Mills pops off a three to cap a 7-0 run and get the Spurs within six. But there was just too much firepower from the Rockets down the stretch. Spurs fall by 14. The final from Houston, 112 to 98. Tomorrow, that's uh, the Spurs take on the Rockets at the Toyota Center again. Tip-off is set for 7 o'clock. Go Spurs, go. Yeah, one more chance. <laughs> oh, to say it again? Yes. Or play them again? Uh, both. Both, okay. Go yes. Spurs, go? Yes. Yeah, listen to us. Go Spurs, go. Yeah. Right.
<laughs> Time now is 442 and 39 degrees for now. Still ahead, if you've done any holiday shopping online, you probably come across the term buy now, pay later. But what does the fine print say about that? Also next, a preview of a special one on one interview with Vice President elect Kamala Harris and her plans once she takes office. Hi, I'm Robin Roberts in Washington, D.C. on the campus of Howard University. Just wrapped up my interview with Vice President-elect Kamala Harris. This is her beloved alma mater. Here's your GMA first look. Okay. I think people are going to be very encouraged to hear what you said that Mitch McConnell and Joe Biden have spoken. He yeah. has acknowledged yeah. that he is the president-elect. Yeah. How important do you think that is? I think it's critically important. I applaud Mitch McConnell for, for talking to Joe Biden today. You know, it would have been better if it were earlier, but it happened. And that's what's most important. And so let's move forward. Let's move forward. And where we can find common purpose and common ground, let's do that. So there you have it, just a sneak peek of my interview with the Vice President-elect. And you can see much more of my interview coming up on GMA. Well, if you're shopping online, of course everybody is, you're increasingly seeing that option to pay by installments. 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz with what you should know about this sort of modern day reverse layaway. You're shopping online when a killer red handbag catches your eye. So does the spendy price tag. But right there at checkout is an option to buy now, pay later, a concept that's booming in the pandemic economy. There's no question that this is the perfect time for a coming out party for these sorts of services because online shopping's been growing so quickly anyway. Old Navy to Jimmy Choo, retailers are hooking up with companies that offer short-term loans at the point of sale. Names like Afterpay, Klarna, Affirm, and QuadPay. Part of the allure of these services is that a lot of them don't require a credit check to get the loan or they may just do a soft credit check. Matt Schultz with LendingTree says there are upsides. Many of the loans are zero interest and you know exactly what you owe and when, but. There are definitely some downsides to these. And one of the biggest is that if you are late, you'll end up running into some late fees. Or in some cases, high interest. And most don't help you build credit. One key thing to know is that these payment services are not all the same. With some, you may pay once a month. With others, every two weeks. So it's important to know exactly what you're signing up for. And critics caution, you could be tempted to spend more than you can afford. As for that red handbag, with buy now, pay later, instead of $268, it's a more doable $67 in four payments. Attractive if you make those payments on time. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. That is attractive. Yeah, I, I do affirm <laughs> quite often. I've had great luck with it. And I know exactly when those payments, you know, it's, it's automatically paid every month. So uh, yeah. yeah, it is kind of a modern day layout. It's kind of cool. It, it, wor it works. I was going to say it looks a lot better when it says $67 as opposed to, yes. you know, 200 something. More attractive option for some. Mm -hmm. 448, 39 degrees. Let's go ahead and check in with Officer Nick Solis. How are the roads looking this morning? Uh, right now, some things are still looking good out there. Still a lot of green on the screen here. Nothing going on. So that's always good news. Let's go straight to the transit guide. Now we got 281 at the quarry right now. Looks good both north and southbound lanes there. We have 281 in Grayson going south of 281. Now that looks great. And we'll do one more. 35 in Caesar Chavez there, the downtown corridor. That's flowing very smoothly. Thanks. Did Marilyn get the bag? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We'll have to ask. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Um, I'm say. guessing no. I, that was just for demonstration yeah. purposes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I was going to tell you, Mike, you need to move over. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, the other way. Right. This was from yesterday, of course, with uh, some of the fog hanging around here. We don't have anything like that, but just a very cool picture with the cows just yeah, hanging out there. Thank you very much for the uh, KSAC Connect picture. Beautiful view of downtown right now, and at least the camera is not shaking because, boy, the trees were shaking and those winds were just howling all night long. Woke me up in the middle of the night. It was really uh, gusting that much. The winds have finally settled down just a little bit and obviously brought in much, much drier air. Dew points have dropped down about 10, 15 degrees or more so compared to yesterday when we had those higher dew points, of course, and kept going up throughout the morning. We had 
had some of that fog to deal with. And now with this dry air in place, that's what's uh, been allowing temperatures to uh, to drop down. And the wind, though, obviously keeps the atmosphere stirred up, so it doesn't allow us to get as cold as what we could get. That's going to be coming tomorrow morning because we're not going to have any breeze tonight to speak of dry air, clear skies. And so get ready for a, a more freezing temperatures, more widespread freezing temperatures uh, tomorrow morning. Throughout the rest of today, we're going to have plenty of sunshine out there. Good looking day. Staying on the chilly side, though, mid upper 50s. Jacket's a pretty good idea. Tomorrow, cold start, plenty of sunshine around here. And then the moisture makes a return. Cloud's going to be coming back in here Friday. And I don't think we're going to be seeing anything as far as any any chance for any precipitation until probably about late Friday and overnight into Saturday. And that's what um, a lot of the computer models are indicating. It's just going to be the first part of the day on Saturday as well. Rain chances, though, are still maybe 20% at best. That's just about it. Now, big story, and uh, Stephanie was talking about this a little bit earlier. There's that huge storm system. This thing was uh, just about over the Rocky Mountains this time yesterday, so it is moving along, just hauling across the country, and as you can see, a lot of rain, a lot of snow, and a lot of freezing rain in portions of the Ohio Valley and the Tennessee Valley, and again, this is going to be working its way up uh, the East Coast, and they're talking about foot, some folks two feet of snow from that storm system. So again, if you got any travels today and even tomorrow, you may want to check ahead just to make sure there's no delays. 51 degrees today at noon. Beautiful, beautiful day. We'll have uh, maybe a little bit of a breeze out there. Not too bad, but just enough to keep coat handy. 57 for high temperature today and plenty of sunshine. Then tomorrow we're going to be hitting freezing. And it's going to be more more widespread Then 37 on Friday morning. We'll have more clouds around here next couple of days today and tomorrow. are just going to be spectacular clouds Friday much milder in the morning. Then on Saturday with a couple of little sprinkly showers around here, then another. Mm, yeah, front's going to move through here. It'll just kind of get rid of some of the humidity and put temperatures closer to normal readings. A little bit on the warm side, though, starting off next week. And a 100% chance of a giant, giant snowflake next week. <laughs> That's just the graph. Monday. Right. Yes, oh, Monday. Oh, oh, okay. Gotcha. About this time, Monday, a little bit earlier, we will officially be into winter. The well, winter I, solstice out east, stuff. I've seen this kind of sky with a few snowflakes, so I, well, I wasn't going to rule it out. Yes, but that's not going to be the case around here. So Yes, sir. Well, okay. it's nice to see it at least on a graphic. Right. Or for me to have it completely wrong. Thank you, Mike. 452, <laughs> 39 degrees. Okay, coming up next, we have a Whitney. We now know who will play legendary singer Whitney Houston in an upcoming film. Here are your lottery numbers. Pick three. 788 Fireball 8 Daily 4 numbers 9659 Fireball 6 Cash 5 7 8 14 26 32 and your Mega Millions 1 10 18 20 46 Mega Ball 15 Mega Flyer 2 Good luck Welcome back we now know who will play Whitney Houston at a new biopic plus more details on a semi-royal podcast. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. We have a Whitney. British actress Naomi Aki will play legendary singer Whitney Houston in the upcoming film, I Want to Dance with Somebody. Aki, chosen after a worldwide search, co-starred in the most recent Star Wars movie. The biopic, being made with the full cooperation of Houston's estate, is scheduled to be out Thanksgiving 2020. In other famous people casting news, Pamela Anderson and rocker Tommy Lee have met their match. Lily James will play the blonde bombshell and Sebastian Stan, the Motley Crue drummer, in the upcoming Hulu series Pam and Tommy, which focuses on their rocky relationship and leaked sex tape. It's perhaps the most regal podcast ever announced. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle will get behind the mic for an interview series for Spotify. They say they'll focus on different voices and perspectives perhaps you haven't heard before in order to find common ground. Look for it next year and a holiday special this month. HBO Max, the latest streaming service, saying it'll pull Chappelle's show after Dave Chappelle expressed frustration that the series he created was being bought and used without him seeing a dime. Netflix already agreed to pull it. CBS All Access is still running it. And happy birthday, Kristen Ritter, the Jessica Jones star, is 39 today, while actor Benjamin Bratt is 57. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. And time now is 457 and 39 degrees for now. Still ahead on GMSA, fresh off his electoral college win, President-elect Joe Biden is in Georgia trying to get more control of the, help get more control of the Senate. Plus, Walmart is announcing that it will begin using fully driverless trucks next year. We're going to have more details ahead in Tech Bites. 
Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. New overnight, a man is badly hurt after a crash with a tanker truck. We've got the details. Plus, President-elect Joe Biden pushing forward after getting a big one from the Electoral College. And a winning forecast around here lately. Uh, we're still on the lookout for a, a surge in that awful mountain cedar, and that could happen at any day. But we'll get an update from Mike coming up. First up, though, a good morning to you. It is Wednesday. We've made it to midweek. It is the 16th of December. Thanks for joining us. And yeah, so we were 39 degrees, I guess, just half an hour ago. Now we're 38. It's going to be a little, a little chillier. A little chillier. What's happening right now, Mike? I ask because it's behind you in big bold letters. <laughs> <laughs> well, the wind has settled down. That's the nice thing because boy, oh boy, that wind was just screaming overnight. And it's going to be interesting to see when this morning's um, pollen count comes out, whether mountain cedar, if those trees got a good shake from all that uh, wind overnight. Uh, temperatures, yeah, it is chilly out there. We are 38 degrees and uh, fairly dry air, but with the wind, that's to help to keep temperatures kind of up a little bit. Uh, we do have a lot of the ingredients though to get uh, pretty chilly this morning. I think we will be dro uh, dropping down at least another couple of degrees. 55 then for a uh, afternoon temperature will top off right around 57 later on today. And as far as the allergens, this is from or the aquifer first of all went up yesterday three tenths of a foot and yesterday's allergen count mountain cedar was just on the low side. But again, it will be interesting to see when that update comes out uh, just after about seven o'clock this morning. All right, as far as temperatures around the area right now, We've got the freezing reading up there at uh, Bernie stage and mid 60s in parts of the hill country. Again, it's the wind that has kind of kept things stirred up a little bit. And when you have no wind at all, that allows the heaviest, coldest air because it's a lot denser. The colder air is to settle down here to the surface. And that's what actually is going to be happening tomorrow morning. That's when we get our coldest temperature readings. But we do have a little bit of a wind chill to deal with right now. 27 Kerrville, 33 out there at the airport. Same thing in New Braunfels. And we'll have enough of a breeze throughout the day today to warrant a jacket. Plus, temperatures are only going to be in the about mid to upper 50s, sunny and cool today, a freezing start tomorrow, and then we make it up into the low 60s and then going in toward the weekend. A couple of showers going to be possible late, late Friday, early Saturday. Not any big deal. And then sunny and mild over most of the weekend. We'll take a look ahead to the first official days of winter coming up in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Here's Officer Nick Solis. Anything big going on, sir? Not right now, Mike. Nothing's going on. Things look good out there in the city. Let's take a look at some drive times then, what, shall we? All right, here we go. Let's see. I think if you're going 1604 westbound from I-35 to I-10, you got a 15-minute ride. And if you're going 1604 eastbound from I-10 back to 35, you got a 15 minute ride as well, so things looking good both east and westbound lanes there on 1604. All right, Trans Guide 410 at Broadway right now looking smooth there on the northeast side. I 10 at Hildebrand North Central now. That looks great. And uh, let's see what else we have here. Uh, 1604 at Bandera Road Northwest side looking smooth. Mark Steph, back to you. Thank you, Nick. A man is in critical condition this morning after a collision with a tanker truck. It happened around 1 this morning on the south side in the 10,000 block of Roosevelt, just south of 410. Police say the 45-year-old man crossed into the path of a tanker truck that was pulling out of a refinery. The man was extracted by firefighters and taken to the hospital. No other injuries were reported. In this morning's SAQ segment, our region has become one of the fastest growing in the country. And that means new homes and new streets popping up all the time. And sometimes they pop up even faster than GPS and things like Google Maps. Our Samuel King joins us now. Now, Samuel, how does it all work? Well, it is a bit of a process, Stephanie and Mark, to get a street added to Google Maps or to GPS, and it all depends on the company. And it's been a bit of a source of frustration for Denise. She lives in the Solana Ridge neighborhood out by Joint Base Lackland. And she asked, I've recently moved to a new area where they're building out some houses, and when they put the name of my street, and they put the name of my I live on Capella Cove and would like to know how long it will take for GPS to pick up my street name. So I reached out to Google, which she uses primarily. She said basically their maps are only as good as the data they receive. They do send out their street view vehicles you may see driving around, but for other streets they rely on mapping data from government sources or even developers. Also users can request a street be added through the Google Maps app using the send feedback button. Now, Google will review the request, but be patient. Sometimes it does take some time for your street to be added. So if you have any questions about transportation in our area, you can reach out 
to our website, ksat.com. And coming up at 6, we'll have more on how, how this works, including how artificial intelligence helps with the mapping and routing process. Stephanie and Mark. The first doses of the vaccines are making their way throughout Texas as more than 100 medical facilities are set to get shipments this week and next. San Antonio received its first shipments on Monday, but there is still a long way to go. Now that the vaccine is here, the hard part will be distributing it to millions of people across the state. As the supply increases over the next few months, people will have more options to get a vaccine. Any facility, organization, or healthcare provider that is licensed to have or provide vaccination services is eligible to become a COVID-19 vaccinator in Texas. As of last Friday, there were close to 7,000 providers already enrolled to distribute a COVID-19 vaccine and close to another 1,500 in the process of being approved. To make sure records are kept accurate, these healthcare providers must enroll with the state's health services department. While the vaccine is only in medical facilities right now, soon it will be in doctor's offices, pharmacies, and other healthcare facilities. CVS, Walgreens, and HEB announced they will participate in a federal program for COVID-19 vaccine distribution when it becomes more available to the general public. That will likely be in the spring. Another question many people have had is how much will it cost? Pfizer and Moderna struck a deal with the government to fund and provide 100 million doses each. The CDC says vaccine doses purchased with our taxpayer dollars will be given to the American public for free. But vaccine providers will be able to charge fees for administering the shot to someone. So keep that in mind. Check out KSAT.com for the latest coverage on the COVID-19 vaccine in South Texas. RJ Marcus, KSAT 12 News. Two high stakes races for Senate could completely flip the GOP's control in the Senate. Fresh off cementing an electoral college win, President elect Joe Biden snubbing in Georgia for two Democratic candidates. CNN's Melissa Rainey has the latest from Atlanta. Vote Georgia like your life depends on it because it actually does. The campaign trail is on fire in Georgia. President elect Biden paying a visit to the state Tuesday. Hello, Atlanta. <laughs> Alongside Senate Democratic challengers John Ossoff and Raphael Warnock. I need two senators from this state who want to get something done, not two senators who are just going to get in the way. Because look, getting nothing done just hurts Georgia. The Trump campaign slammed Biden's backing of Ossoff and Warnock, saying in a statement, quote, that Joe Biden would campaign for them is further proof that he is utterly in the grip of the extreme left, which is the driving force in today's Democrat Party. Now, early voters have been hitting the polls to cast their ballots before the official runoff election day on January 5th. And runoff ad spending in Georgia is nearing an eye-popping $500 million. But we're going above and beyond. So for this Senate runoff, we're making sure that we are encouraging both political parties to have monitors there as the envelopes are received, as you're verifying the signature, so that people can verify the process. And also we have 24-7 video surveillance of the entire process. So we want to make sure whatever the transparency level needs to be, let's step it up to the next level so we can give voters that confidence. In Atlanta, I'm Melissa Rainey reporting. And time now is 5.08 and 38 degrees. Still ahead, more details on Walmart's latest efforts to begin using fully driverless trucks. Also next, new research shows how long you need to exercise in order to fend off health problems like diabetes and heart disease. Outside with Live Cam, Mike's midweek forecast coming up, and it's never too early to start looking ahead to the next weekend. You're watching GMSA. The pandemic, it may be difficult to find time, space, or fun ways to get exercise, but it really is very important. According to a study published in the British Journal of Medicine, new research suggests that you may only need 11 minutes of exercise each day to live longer. Max Massey and Sarah Costa break it down. Research has shown that exercise can improve your life expectancy. It lowers your risk of developing age-related diseases like cardiovascular disease and type 2 diabetes. On the other hand, sedentary activity, which is any low energy activity that involves sitting, reclining, or lying down, is linked with disease and early death. CNBC states a new study finds people who sat for about 8 hours to 10 hours a day, but managed to clock in just 11 minutes of moderate to vigorous exercise a day, were less likely to die than those who only got about 2 minutes of exercise a day. 
To put this in perspective, the physical activity guidelines for Americans suggest that adults should get 150 to 300 minutes a week or 20 to 45 minutes a day of moderate intensity activity or 75 to 150 minutes a week or 10 to 20 minutes a day of vigorous intensity aerobic physical activity or an equivalent combination of moderate to vigorous intensity aerobic activity. For example, taking a brisk walk, playing doubles tennis, or raking the yard are considered moderate intensity activities. But jogging, running, taking a strenuous fitness class, hiking, even carrying heavy groceries upstairs can count as vigorous exercise. It's not clear exactly how much physical activity people need to counteract the effects of sitting all day, but CNBC states this new research shows that a little bit of movement each day is better than none, and it could have an impact on your lifespan. If your daily routine involves sitting a lot, well, you should consider setting a time of reminding yourself to get up and move every few hours. Good reminder, so get up, get moving, and get active. Guys, back to you. And truth be known, we used to sit down on stools for this show. Now we stand for the entire two and a half hours. So I feel like I'm giving my 11 minutes in right now. Yeah, we're yeah. good to go. I know. Burning <laughs> calories just standing here. 513, <laughs> 38 degrees. And still ahead, how Walmart plans to begin using fully driverless trucks in the near future. More prompts for Google why Gmail users may still be having issues after an outage earlier this week. These are real people not actors, who've got their eczema under control. With less eczema, you can show more skin. So roll up those sleeves and help heal your skin from within with Dupixent. Dupixent is the first treatment of its kind that continuously treats moderate to severe eczema or atopic dermatitis, even between flare-ups. Dupixent is a biologic and not a cream or steroid. Many people taking Dupixent saw clear or almost clear skin and had significantly less itch. Don't use if you're allergic to Dupixin. Serious allergic reactions can occur, including anaphylaxis, which is severe. Tell your doctor about new or worsening eye problems, such as eye pain or vision changes or a parasitic infection. If you take asthma medicines, don't change or stop them without talking to your doctor. So help heal your skin from within and talk to your eczema specialist about Dupixin. If your financial situation has changed, we may be able to help. In today's Tech Bytes, Google's second outage in two days. The company has yet to explain a problem that reportedly affected about 18,000 Gmail users. They were receiving error messages or having other issues for about three hours. On Monday, Google suffered an outage that affected several services. Walmart is changing the way it delivers. The company is going driverless to make deliveries next year as part of a program in Arkansas. It's joining forces with a tech startup to operate self-driving trucks. The program may also be used in Louisiana. The ex-wife of Amazon founder Jeff Bezos has announced that she's given away $4 billion. Mackenzie Scott says in recent months, she gave the money to nearly 400 organizations, mainly in areas struggling to cope with the pandemic, food insecurity, and racial inequality. Scott is worth more than $60 billion. Those are your Tech bites. 518. Let's go ahead and check traffic with Officer Nick Solis. Hey, Steph, right now things are still looking good out there. We're off to a very quiet start. And apparently it was very quiet yesterday, too. So good news out there. Good job, San Antonio drivers. You're driving very good right now. A lot of green on the screen there. And just go straight to the trans guide. 35 and 410 was looking good. 10 at Proband downtown area. That looks, oh, not downtown, I'm sorry, but looks good there. I-10 at Callahan. That's looking smooth going uh, east and westbound. And 37 at Jones on the southeast side of town. Looking great. Just remember. Two hands on the steering wheel and wear that seatbelt. It's very important. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Mike? I saw you looking over there at the, uh, the picture behind me. Yeah. Trying to figure it out. I was trying to, because it wasn't up behind you yet. Yeah. Um, so, so, okay, so there's Kitty Cat and okay. looking at the sausage. But <laughs> it's a National Herding Cat Day. Only herded one of three, but it is a start. What's like? Didn't know there was such a day. So right. I didn't okay. I, and yeah. and who knew cats liked charcuterie boards? <laughs> well, that's true. I mean, I'm sure they'll eat anything. Sure. But, uh, the other uh, term for herding cats is coaching t-ball. By the way. Ah, uh, um, yes, it is. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. If you've ever done that, it is like herding cats, but it's a lot of fun. Anyway, thank you for the uh, and uh, congratulations on herding one cat there. So. <laughs> like that. Anyway, here's the picture outside right now, and the camera's not shaking uh, like it probably was overnight because of the wind. We're just howling overnight, and. Uh, 
uh, yesterday we had a high temperature 65 degrees, just about exactly normal, really pleasant in the afternoon and 67 up around New Braunfels. Now today it's going to be a different story. We are back down on the cool side of things. We'll stay in the mid to upper 50s later on today as this front has moved on through overnight and it is pulling in some cooler air around here with the wind. Now it's not that breezy right now, but with a little bit of a breeze out there in the wind overnight, that has really um, not allowed the, the heaviest, coolest air to settle down here to the surface. Plus the, the real cold stuff will continue to kind of filter in here overnight. And so that's why we're setting up for the coldest morning tomorrow. We're going to see a lot of widespread uh, freezing temperatures tomorrow. As far as any cloud cover, uh, we're going to stay sunny now through uh, Thursday, through all day tomorrow, and most of tomorrow night. Then the clouds come in here uh, to, on Friday and early Saturday morning. There may be a couple little sprinkles around here, just one or two of them. Uh, most of it's going to be off to the east. I wouldn't get excited about rain chances on Saturday, just uh, you know, maybe a little bit of free lawn watering here and there. And then all that's going to get pushed on out with another front that's going to move through later on Saturday. It's not going to be that potent, but it'll just kind of get rid of any humidity that has uh, kind of moved back on in here toward the end of the week and then we'll have plenty of sunshine to finish off the weekend and it looks like maybe some more clouds then to start off first portion of next week and again the big story out there is that storm system which is now I mean this thing is really clipping along it was over there around the Rockies yesterday now the Ohio Valley of uh, Tennessee Valley working its way up in toward the Great Lakes and up here in the eastern seaboard they're expecting foot a couple of feet of snow and when this thing's all said and done so you know that's just going to be a mess as far as uh, travel plans today as well as maybe tomorrow so if you are traveling check ahead 51 degrees today at noon around here sunny skies beautiful beautiful day keep a jacket handy 57 that's it especially if you're in the shadows it's gonna be kind of nippy out there and then tomorrow we have the, the cooler air settling in here the coolest air settling in and uh, clear skies dry air light wind and so that means we're going to be down around 30 here in town 37 Friday morning more clouds around here I don't think we see anything you know maybe a little mist perhaps Friday morning but a couple of showers Saturday morning very mild starts up in the mid to upper 60s and then kind of uh, you know moderate things a little bit. It'll be a mild weekend as far as high temperatures are concerned. Low temperatures, still jacket weather. Yeah, tomorrow morning, brr. It's going to be super cold. Yeah, it's going to be a chilly one. All but right. uh, great news for those who like the cold weather in December. Yes, yes. indeed. And it looks like we are going to start to warm up going into about the first half of next week. Right now, Long Range has a pretty potent front moving through probably about uh, Thursday of next week, Christmas Eve. So. Christmas Eve. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Just sounds <laughs> bizarre to hear. 522, 38 degrees. And still ahead in your morning spotlight. More details on a new documentary featuring singer Billie Eilish. Plus, how Mariah Carey is moving on from Christmas to take over New Year's celebrations. Today in entertainment news, we have a first look at a new film about a teenage superstar. Plus, how to spend New Year's Eve as the guest of a music icon. CNN's David Daniel has details in the Hollywood Minute. Are you guys okay? Hey, you guys need to be okay, because y'all are the reason I'm okay, okay? Imagine becoming a global superstar at age 17. You don't have to imagine, Billie Eilish, the world's a little blurry, looks at the teenager's life on the road and at home with her family, as she wrote, recorded and released her debut album. R.J. Cutler's documentary arrives in theaters and on Apple TV Plus February 26th. I'm so happy and so proud to be a part of it. The authorized Whitney Houston biopic has found its leading lady. Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker actress Naomi Aki is set to star in I Want to Dance with Somebody, which is being produced by Pat Houston, Whitney's sister-in-law and longtime manager, and by music producer Clive Davis, meaning the movie can use the singer's iconic catalog of songs, including her vocals. I've always loved Christmas so much since I was a little girl. Mariah Carey may love Christmas, but she wants to host you for New Year's Eve. The singer will serenade you as you ring in 2021 from Airbnb's geodesic Dome on the Nasdaq Terrace above New York's Times Square. The night includes dinner prepared by a private chef and plenty of other glitzy perks, including a great view of the ball drop, all under strict COVID-19 safety guidelines. You can request the booking beginning at 9 a.m. Eastern on Monday, December 21st. Details at airbnb.com slash happy holidays. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel.
Right now it's just about 527, 38 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, the COVID-19 vaccination process is underway, but health officials warn that everyone still needs to remain vigilant against the virus. We have bomb and drug sniffing dogs at places like airports to keep us safe. But what about COVID smelling dogs? We'll have more details on how they are being trained as we speak. Plus, are you a fan of Starbucks buy one get one deals? Why the company has decided to stop the program for now. Hi, good morning. It is Wednesday, December 16th. Yeah, 38 degrees out at San Antonio International. What's the latest on what we can expect today? Mike Goster A Beautiful day, not as windy as what it was overnight. Boy, that window was just howling out there, but it is going to be staying on the cool side, more like what we had on Monday as opposed to yesterday. Yesterday made it up to 65, a normal high temperature, but we're going to be staying in the, uh, the 50s today. So 38, as you mentioned, dew points at 21. So we got some very dry air and still a light breeze out there. So there is a hint of a wind chill in places. Feels like 33 out there at the airport. Feels like freezing Balverde, uh, Bernie stage. The wind chills down in the 20s out in portions of the hill country. And uh, we're not going to have too much of a breeze throughout the rest of today, but just enough. Plus, with those temperatures only in the mid to upper 50s, uh, you get in the shadows and it's going to be kind of nippy out there. Mountain Cedar is on the low side. This is yesterday's count. What's going to be interesting when the updated reading comes out in about uh, maybe hour and a half, two hours or so to see what those winds overnight did to the uh, the mountain cedar trees and throughout the rest of today 51 degrees at noon and like I said a high temperature up to 57 winds out on the north maybe 10 uh, 15 miles per hour get ready if you think it's cold this morning wait till tomorrow morning then we take a look at the weekend and the first couple of days of winter the official start of winter is right around the corner details in just a couple of minutes time saver traffic right now and officer Nick Salise anything uh, big going on sir no Mike right now nothing's going on right now everything looks good Flowing smoothly from the northwest all the way northeast and south. Things look great right now. Let's go straight to some drive times here. Okay, so this is if you're on Bandera Road. If you're on Bandera Road from 1604 to 410, it's a nine minute drive. So that's going through Leon Valley and then back from Bandera from 410 to 1604, 11 minutes. Looks good there because a lot of times Bandera starts to get backed up uh, there at Eckerd Road. All right, here we go. Trans guy time. Let's see what we have here. I 10 at West Avenue right now. Flowing smoothly. Looks good there and uh, I 10 at Woodlawn. This is down the down the highway. That looks great. And uh, let's do one more. I 10 at Days of Awe. This is a complete other side of I 10. The northwest side looking good. 90 west of Zalzamora flowing smooth. Mark Steph, back to you. Thank you, Nick. Sheriff's investigators are looking for a driver who left a man to die in the street in northeast Bear County. They say the driver took off after hitting that man, a pedestrian. Katrina Weber is live near downtown with that story. Now, Katrina, what do they know so far? Well, not much. In fact, it sounds like investigators have their work cut out for them when it comes to solving this case. Sheriff's deputies told us that they found the man down in the street. Uh, it happened uh, late last night around 930. They found the man near the intersection of Winsford and Oldham Road. Although deputies tried to perform CPR, that man still died. They talked to one person who saw at least part of this hit and run crash, but they say that person wasn't able to offer any real help including a description of the type of car involved. Investigators say that the man who died was in his 50s, but they have not released his name yet. Reporting live near downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. First doses of the Pfizer-BioNTech COVID-19 vaccine are starting to roll out to Americans. But as CNN's John Lawrence reports, health officials say the deadly virus will still pose a serious threat during the upcoming holiday season and beyond. A major moment in medical history. Sandra Lindsay, an ICU nurse at the Long Island Jewish Medical Center, is the first person in New York and among the first in the country to receive the COVID-19 vaccine. I feel great. It doesn't feel any different than the influenza vaccine I take annually. I wanted to do it to inspire people who may be skeptical about taking the vaccine and trust in the science. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention recommends the vaccine be given to frontline health care workers and people in long-term care facilities first. It is such a moment of hope because we can see the light. We are exposed to it every minute of every day. 
So I can't tell you how much this means to me. While the vaccine is a major step forward for the few who can get it, health officials stress the battle against the pandemic is far from over. We have to drill home the message that this vaccine, as wonderful it is, as it is, is not going to change the trajectory of what we experienced this winter. They say Americans need to keep wearing masks and maintain physical distance. Drug makers, meanwhile, have to ramp up vaccine manufacturing. Creating tens of thousands of doses for clinical trials different than hundreds of millions of doses for, you know, the world. I'm John Lawrence reporting. President Donald Trump now deciding whether to have a special counsel appointed to advance a federal tax investigation into the son of President-elect Joe Biden. That could set up a potential showdown with incoming acting Attorney General Jeffrey Rosen. President Trump has been angry that outgoing Attorney General William Barr didn't publicly announce the investigation into Hunter Biden. He's consulted on the potential for a special counsel with top White House aides, uh, officials and outside allies. Beyond appointing a special prosecutor to investigate the younger Biden, the president is interested in having another special counsel appointed to look into his own claims of election fraud. AAA is projecting a nearly 30% drop in holiday travel this year. It's expecting about 34 million fewer U.S. residents will travel from December 23rd to January 3rd compared to 2019. It shows many Americans may be listening to advice from the CDC not to travel over the holidays during the pandemic. AAA predicts nearly 3 million Americans will fly over the holidays. That's that way, that's way down, almost 60 percent from 2019, and about 81 million people will travel by car, about 25 percent fewer than last year. What's the holiday season here in South Texas without tamales? SA Live's Christmas primetime show is all about celebrating gifts in 2020, and Delia's tamales is definitely a gift to San Antonio this year. That business made its way to San Antonio this summer, and the long lines haven't stopped since the doors opened. This Friday on SA Live's primetime Christmas show, you're going to hear from the matriarch of the family business herself, showing how hard work and family helps to build the foundation of this thriving business that has a cult following. Plus, you still have time to order from the hotspot for Christmas, but the deadline is near. So be sure to watch Friday here at KSAT, 7 o'clock for all the details, plus music, crafts, and an up-close look at people in our community making a difference for the better in this season of giving. Looking forward to it. Time now, 536 and 38 degrees for now. Still ahead, how health workers are getting ready to use highly trained dogs to help detect coronavirus in patients. Also next, the latest details on the biggest East Coast winter storm in years that is set to hit the Mid-Atlantic and Northeast starting today. It's going to be a big one. And outside with live cam back here at home, we can handle upper 30s and no snow here. How much of a warm up today? And we're looking ahead to the upcoming weekend on this midweek day. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Just about 540 now on one of the biggest winter storms to hit the Northeast in years. When all is said and done, parts of central Pennsylvania, northern New Jersey and Connecticut could see up to 18 inches of snow and winds could reach 50 miles per hour. ABC's Mona Kassar Abdi has all the details. Overnight, a potentially crippling storm taking shape set to affect 65 million Americans. Snowfall totals could top one and a half feet in some inland areas of the Northeast. Winter storm alerts up this morning from Georgia to New England, and the coronavirus is complicating preparations. <laughs> Connecticut is being forced to rely on outside contractors to plow the roads because of COVID outbreak at the Department of Transportation. More than 100 employees have tested positive, and more are waiting for results. That can mean delays clearing the roads tonight. We'll have about 50 trucks on the road between our public works uh, and parks department, as well as our outside contractors. In New York City, restaurants are bracing for another hit days after indoor dining was banned again. Outdoor dining spaces must now remove chairs, tables and heaters to make space for plows. The storm also threatening to delay shipments of the COVID vaccine. UPS and FedEx say they're monitoring the conditions and will divert shipments as needed. Meanwhile, some kids can now blame the pandemic for ruining snow days. Public schools in New York City will be holding class no matter the condition. We still have remote learning in place. But in Pennsylvania, some school districts are saying not just yet. They're still giving students the chance for a snow day if conditions warrant. Get away from the screens, get outside and be a kid. Obviously, 
follow all the health precautions, but just be a kid. Mona Kosar Abdi, ABC News, New York. Time now is 541 and 38 degrees for now. Up next, why Starbucks has decided to suspend its buy one, get one happy hour program. This essay salute holiday greeting is brought to you by Randolph Brooks Federal Credit Union. From all of us at RBFCU, Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays to our veterans and active duty service members. Especially our son, Marine Captain Drew Norton, and daughter-in-law, Lieutenant Junior Grade Marissa Norton. We, we miss, miss you. you. About quarter to six right now. Researchers say early studies are promising when it comes to alternative methods for detecting the coronavirus. Sarah Costa explains what this could mean for the future of COVID sniffing dogs. We have bomb and drug sniffing dogs at airports to keep people safe. Could we have COVID smelling dogs at airports and big events in the future to alert people of the virus? Dogs are being trained to detect the whiff of COVID-19 infections. Dog trainers across the globe say they are seeing extraordinary results in some cases, and they say that dogs can detect the virus with almost perfect accuracy. According to Nature.com, scientists involved with the efforts suggest that canines could help control the pandemic because they can screen hundreds of people in an hour in busy places such as airports or sports stadiums and are much cheaper and faster than conventional testing methods such as the RNA amplification technique PCR. Even though dogs seem to detect COVID-19 with remarkable accuracy, researchers say large-scale studies are needed before the approach is scaled up. James Logan, an infectious disease researcher at the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine, who is studying and training COVID-19 dogs, says it's important not to go out too early with grand claims and small data sets. With larger data sets, then the wider scientific community can evaluate these claims. Despite more needed studies, these dogs in training are still very good dogs. In one study, researchers trained eight dogs on samples taken from the mouths and windpipes of seven hospitalized COVID-19 patients and seven people without COVID-19. The dogs identified 83% of positive cases in 96% of negative cases. Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News, back to you guys. Thank you, Sarah. In your morning consumer headlines with coronavirus cases on the rise nationwide, Starbucks is making some changes to help cut down on the number of people in its stores. The company is temporarily suspending its buy one, get one drink deals, better known as happy hour. Starbucks says that it will forego the next planned happy hour date set for December 17th and January 7th. In lieu of the paused BOGO deals, the company says it will offer more double star days for its loyalty program members. Holidays are upon us. That means more folks are trying to get gifts to loved ones, but time is running out. For USPS First Class Mail and packages, you need to get it in by Friday if you want it delivered by Christmas. Monday is the deadline for FedEx Express Saver and three-day freight, as well as UPS three-day select. The deadline for USPS retail ground service has passed. Yesterday was also the last day to get FedEx home del delivery and FedEx ground on time. Very nerve-wracking. Mm. <laughs> Let's check traffic right now, see how things are looking out there. Nick, what is the latest, sir? Yeah, I think it's still looking good, Mark. Uh, not a lot going on right now. Good news. Had an accident up there on the access road of 281 near the airport. That's cleared now. So, like I said, traffic flowing smoothly. Let's go straight to Transguide here. 10 at Callahan East right now looking good. 37 at Jones on the southeast side looking even better. Traffic flowing very smoothly right now. I-10 at West Avenue looks great. Uh, so all around the city is just looking wonderful right now. And 10 at Woodlawn down the road there. Still looking great. Thank you, Nick. Sounds All right. good. Hey, that's nice. Yeah, beautiful picture. We'll talk about that in a minute. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Because we have... you need something furry and cuddly to keep you warm. We want to tell you about some pets that need homes over there at the San Antonio Humane Society. Pumpkin Spice. Yes, indeed. She is a mini bobcat. Hmm. She loves her daily head scratches and will be your best friend. Give her some little kitty treats. She was found wandering the streets Aww. and she's in search of her perfect home. Look at that. Look at Maximus, a four year old retriever. Oh, can you be imagine being greeted by that every morning? Sucker for tennis balls can play fetch all day long. Good boy looking for a good home. I mean, what a great walking, jogging partner be fantastic. For more information, visit SAHumane.org. They're over there at 4804 Fredericksburg Road. 226-7461 is the number to call. Give them a, a shout-out and take somebody home for Christmas.
All right, back to this picture. Yeah, it is gorgeous. This was taken a couple of days ago, and this is what it's going to look like uh, later on this afternoon without any of those clouds. I don't think we'll have anything but uh, clear skies out there. We've got some clear skies right now, and boy, we had those winds overnight as the latest front moved on through. So that has dried out the air, not only down here at the surface, but also upstairs in the atmosphere. And you can also, I mean, kind of see how that is moving on through here and ushering in the drier air, this darker shade of gray and even this kind of tannish shade means we're going to have some beautiful blue skies throughout the rest of today. And uh, obviously nothing is showing up on the uh, satellite picture either. And again, the big story we were talking about this huge, huge storm system. This is on the heels of the one that that moved through, brought us the front a few days ago. This actually brought the front through yesterday. It was parked just up to the north of us at this time yesterday. So this thing is really clipping along a lot of snow throughout the Ohio Valley, southern Great Lakes and then it is working its way up there. Notice all of the freezing rain too and there's a lot of big hubs for some of the airlines up there in the East Coast. So if you do have any travel plans today as well as uh, maybe even tomorrow because they're going to be digging out of maybe a foot, foot and a half some areas close to two feet of snow. So it's a very still very, very active wintertime pattern. The really cold stuff, though, is still staying up there in Canada. Now, granted, we have some cold temperatures, but not just that, that ridiculously cold Arctic air. But that low will continue to just race off to the east, and we have uh, nice weather for the next couple of days. Then we start to warm up just a little bit as we go in toward Friday and Saturday. Friday night into Saturday is going to be on the warm side, and there's another trough, which is going to be sliding on through the area. This may actually squeeze out a sprinkle or two early Saturday morning. I wouldn't really count on it all that much, but that will then also get rid of any humidity that tries to build back in here. We will be fairly pleasant for, say, uh, rest of the day, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, maybe a couple of extra clouds hanging on in here. Then another big low is going to be developing out there to the west, and this one looks like it is going to bring a fairly potent front through here uh, by sometime next Thursday on Christmas Eve. So we'll be kind of on the mild side leading up to that, and then good shot of cold air looks like it's going to be coming on in here for Christmas Eve as well as Christmas Day. Long range, but that's how it's looking right now. 51 degrees today at noon, sunny skies and gorgeous, gorgeous day. Plenty of blue skies out there. 57 for a high temperature. Keep a jacket handy, especially in the uh, in the shadows. And then tomorrow we're going to have clear skies overnight, dry air, light wind and the perfect ingredients for a cold morning down to 30 here in town. Big warm up. We double that throughout the day and Friday. More clouds increasing throughout the day. A couple of sprinkles Saturday morning, a shower here or there, and then temperatures will be back down to basically normal readings. A little bit on the mild side Sunday into next week. And didn't you want us all to wear turtlenecks tomorrow morning? Um, sure. Just okay. kind of a, a group effort. I'm on it. You're on that? Yeah. OK, cool. Well, if I have one. You don't know? Yeah. <laughs> OK. All right. There's still time. Uh, 552, 38 degrees. A new documentary on music legends, the Bee Gees, now streaming live. We're going to have a preview next. Take a look at your lottery numbers. Pick three, seven, eight, eight, fireball eight, daily four, nine, six, five, nine, fireball six. Cash five, seven, eight, 14, 26, 32, and your mega millions. 1, 10, 18, 20, 46, Mega Ball 15, Mega Plier 2. Good luck. Coming up on GMA, we are prepping for that major snowstorm in the Mid-Atlantic and Northeast. 20 states on alert, but we also have an ABC News exclusive. Robin sitting down one-on-one -on -one with Vice President-Elect Kamala Harris. She was with her at her alma mater, Howard University, and that is just a short distance away from where she will be sworn in as the first woman and first person of color to be named Vice President of the United States. What she is saying about how she and Joe Biden plan to bring the country together. You'll see it all coming up right here on GMA. The most exciting sound in the world. The lives and legacy of one of the biggest singing groups ever is explored in The Bee Gees, How Can You Mend a Broken Heart? We often thought we were triplets. We had the same sense of humor. We had the same love of the same kind of music. Director Frank Marshall thinks audiences may be surprised by the group's pre and post Saturday Night Fever careers. I do. I mean, you know, obviously everybody on the planet knows about Saturday Night Fever, the movie and, and the album, but it, it's much deeper than that. And I think people kind of treat them as lightweights when they're really heavyweights. 
Staying alive, staying alive. If you think about ha, 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 I mean, I could very easily have just been a horn line. But instead, their voices are so sick, they're like, nah, we're going to sing it. The longevity in their career spanning five decades and over a thousand songs that they wrote. And I think it's 20 number one hits. You know, it's kind of amazing. So I'm hoping that the movie will introduce a new audience and reintroduce that audience from back then. Everything we set out to do, we did. Against all odds. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. Hey, reminder, our KSAT community partner is still stuffing stockings for SAU. You can help spread a little holiday cheer by donating small toys, arts and crafts, and healthy snacks. The Stuff a Stocking Drive runs through December 18th. More information on ksatcommunity.com. Moving along this morning, when it comes to a child's brain development and early learning, experts say the more interaction, the better. Just ahead on Good Morning San Antonio today, we'll hear what a researcher says about a child's first teacher and the impact that person has on a child's development. Trans Guide, live look at I-10 and Hildebrand, and then skipping over to 1604 at Bandera Road. A few more cars out there, but uh, no major problems so far. There's I-10 at Vance Jackson Westbound. We'll be right back. I'm gonna say it one more time. It's about human behavior. That is, keep your mask up, keep physical distancing, and practice proper hygiene. The warnings keep coming from local health officials as cases continue to rise in San Antonio. We're going to take a look at how this month compares to our summer surge. And this morning, Bear County deputies are searching for a driver in a deadly hit and run on the northeast side. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, it is a cold 37 degrees. Go ahead and grab that jacket. You're going to need it today. Live from Chase at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Rise and shine. You're watching GMSA. Happy Wednesday. I was going to say happy Monday for some reason, but happy Wednesday. We made it here December 16th. Thanks for joining us. Let's go to Mike, see how much of a warm, warm up we can expect later on today. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Not a huge warm up. I mean, we'll gain about 20 degrees or so. Mm -hmm. uh, so still no. coolish this mm -hmm. afternoon. Yeah, jackets still pretty good idea this afternoon. Good running weather, I'm sure, though. Yes, I've been loving this. <laughs> mid, mid to upper 50s. Yesterday, we made it up to 65 degrees, a normal high temperature. But today, after that front move through overnight, and you may have heard that with the windows rattling and the trees shaking and everything. Boy, it was windy overnight. Temperatures right now 32 Balverde. So we have had have hit freezing in a couple of spots. Balverde, Helotus, uh, Bernie stage at 30 and right above freezing there in parts of the hill country. So your backyard, you may be uh, below freezing as of right now. And Randolph is also at uh, 31 degrees. There had been a little bit of a wind chill. Not much right now. The wind is uh, uh, kind of a breeze, but uh, not too bad. Mountain Cedar. This is yesterday's reading. It's on the low side. It's going to be interesting to see what the pollen count is when that uh, update comes out in about an hour or so after those winds overnight, whether it's really uh, has been shaking up those mountain cedar trees. So I think we do drop down a couple of more notches in the next few hours and then yeah, a decent warm up, but not any sort of a heat wave today. We'll make it up right around the low 50s today at noon and then continue up, like I said, up to uh, 70, excuse me, 57 degrees later on today for a high temperature and then get ready. If you think this morning Morning's cold. We're going to be even colder tomorrow morning. Good widespread freeze around much of the area. What's in store for the weekend? It's the last weekend of fall, by the way. Winter officially starts Monday morning. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. And Officer Nick Solis. Good morning, sir. And right smack in the middle, I see. Yeah, right there, Mike Central, kind of near south of downtown. We got one accident right now. Probant at McKay Street. Uh, looks like a two-vehicle accident. SAPD is on scene. Tow trucks are there. Hopefully this gets uh, cleared up soon. Not causing too much traffic buildup, though. All right, let's take a look at some drive times right now. Here we go. Oh, you're from, if you're on East Loop 410, from 35 to 37, so 35 to 37 going southbound, you got a 12-minute ride. And if you're northbound on East Loop 410, from 37 back to 35, only 12 minutes right now so looking good there all right taking a look at the trans guide here we go we got i tended hildebrand looking good 1604 bandera in the northwest side that's flowing smooth and uh, we'll do one more here i tended vance jackson looks really good there in the central side mark thank you nick new this morning a man died after a hit and run overnight fair county sheriff's deputy say it happened on the northeast side at the intersection of winsford and oldham around 9 30 last night that's near montgomery drive elementary school Deputies say they performed CPR when they arrived, but the man died on scene. They say one witness saw the hit and run, but 
could not give a vehicle description. A man is in critical condition after crashing into a tanker truck on the south side. San Antonio police say it happened around 1 this morning south on Roosevelt, just outside of Loop 410. Police say the tanker truck was pulling out of a refinery onto Roosevelt when the driver crashed into the side of it. First responders needed to extract the driver from the pickup truck and rush him to Bamsey. We have learned the name of a man who was shot and killed inside his home yes yesterday. The Bear County Medical Examiner has identified a 62-year-old Michael Broadus. Police tell us two of the victim's friends went to his home on Belmont South Charity to check on him, but he didn't answer. Uh, police say they found Broadus dead of a single gunshot wound. Right now, officers are still investigating. We have also learned the name of the man who died last Friday after he lost control in a construction zone and crashed his vehicle. The medical examiner has identified him as 22-year-old Levi Jeffries Jr. Police tell us it happened on Wetmore Road just north of Wurzbach Parkway. Police tell us Jeffries was driving in the section of the construction zone where five lanes of traffic are narrowed down to only two. Officers believe Jeffries didn't notice the construction barrels until it was too late. To the pandemic now, cases jumped in San Antonio yet again yesterday. Local health officials reporting 1,359 new cases of COVID-19. Officials say six more people have died. Mayor Ron Nierberg says the seven-day moving average is now 943 cases a day. They say that 120 people were hospitalized in the city yesterday, which is the highest number in a single day since the pandemic began. And the current surge we are seeing now is similar to the one that happened back in June. Now take a look at the numbers. The bars in red are the numbers reported last night. The bars in yellow were reported on June 28th. Those numbers kept rising until mid-July when our local hospitals cared for more than 1,200 COVID-19 patients. And while the rise was rapid, it was a slow decline, taking months to come back down. The hope is history will not repeat itself, leaving medical personnel strained. Meanwhile, some healthcare workers in San Antonio opting out of getting the COVID-19 vaccine for now. One nurse says she's waiting because she's uh, there is uncertainty. She says she and some of her colleagues feel like the vaccine was rushed and say they don't know enough about it. A local doctor told us last week the vaccine was created in record time because of its similarity to other viral outbreaks such as SARS and MERS. As soon as it broke out in China, and experts from China uh, began to isolate the, the, the S protein or spike protein of the new coronavirus. Uh, researchers across the world sprung into action. And so, yes, it happened quickly, but it also happened in a way that built upon previous uh, uh, studies. Even though the Pfizer vaccine received emergency approval, it doesn't mean the clinical trials are over. Participants will be followed for two years to track any potential side effects. And during this pandemic, it may be difficult to find time, space, or fun ways to exercise, but it really is important. A study published in the British Journal of Medicine suggests that you may only need about 10 minutes of exercise each day to live longer. Max Massey and Sarah Costa break it down. Research has shown that exercise can improve your life expectancy. It lowers your risk of developing age-related diseases like cardiovascular disease and type 2 diabetes. On the other hand, sedentary activity, which is any low energy activity that involves sitting, reclining, or lying down, is linked with disease and early death. CNBC states a new study finds people who sat for about 8 hours to 10 hours a day, but managed to clock in just 11 minutes of moderate to vigorous exercise a day, were less likely to die than those who only got a about two minutes of exercise a day. To put this in perspective, the physical activity guidelines for Americans suggest that adults should get 150 to 300 minutes a week or 20 to 45 minutes a day of moderate intensity activity or 75 to 150 minutes a week or 10 to 20 minutes a day of vigorous intensity aerobic physical activity or an equivalent combination of moderate to vigorous intensity aerobic activity. For example, taking a brisk walk, playing doubles tennis or raking the yard are considered moderate intensity activities, but jogging, running, taking a strenuous fitness class, hiking, even carrying heavy groceries upstairs can count as vigorous exercise. It's not clear exactly how much physical activity people need to counteract the effects of sitting all day, but CNBC states this new research shows that a little bit of movement each day is better than none, and it could have an impact on your lifespan. If your daily routine involves sitting a lot, well, you should consider setting a time of reminding yourself to get up and move every few hours. Good reminder, so get up, get moving, and get active. Guys, back to you. 
608 right now. One viewer who reached out to SAQ says she's a bit frustrated. Her relatively new street is still not showing up on GPS or Google Maps. Our Samuel King joins us now. Now, Samuel, this is a common problem for people, right? Yes, definitely. It can be, especially in a region growing as fast as ours is growing. It can be hard for the mapping services to keep up. Now, Denise lives in the Solana Ridge neighborhood out by Joint Base Lackland. And even in her system, her exact street is in our system, actually. Her exact street isn't showing up just yet. She asked us she recently moved to a new area where they're building some houses. And when I put the name of my street in GPS, it says no location. Her exact street, she says, is Capella Cove. It does exist. We checked. She would like to know how long it will take for the GPS to pick up my street name. Now, the answer does depend on the company. I reached out to Google. They said basically their maps are only as good as the data they receive or collect. Uh, Google sends out their street view vehicles you may see driving around town. But for other streets, they rely on mapping data from government sources or even real estate developers to people that come up with these developments. Google also uses artificial intelligence to increase the speed of the mapping process. It helps better pick out landmarks that people often use to guide their way. And finally, users can request that a street be added through the Google Maps app using the send feedback button. Now, Google will review that request, but be patient. Sometimes it does take a while for a street to be added. If you have tra questions about transportation in our area, you can reach out to me via email at sking at ksat.com, and we'll have a post going through all of this about the Google Maps and GPS at ksat.com a little bit later, so look out for that. Mark, Stephanie? Thank you, Samuel. Right now, 610, 37 degrees. And the Spurs may have lost another preseason game, but the players, they're not feeling down about the upcoming season, and neither are we. We're going to see where the team struggled and where they excelled. Delivering the COVID-19 vaccine can seem like a logistical nightmare after the break. We'll take a look at the plan in place across the state of Texas. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning uh, for your wardrobe planning, you should bring the heavier jacket for the morning hours in the afternoon. Maybe if you have a lighter jacket, we're going to check in with Mike for your full details. The first doses of the vaccines are making their way throughout Texas as more than 100 medical facilities are set to get shipments this week and next. San Antonio received its first shipments on Monday, but there is still a long way to go. Now that the vaccine is here, the hard part will be distributing it to millions of people across the state. As the supply increases over the next few months, people will have more options to get a vaccine. Any facility, organization, or healthcare provider that is licensed to have or provide vaccination services is eligible to become a COVID-19 vaccinator in Texas. As of last Friday, there were close to 7,000 providers already enrolled to distribute a COVID-19 vaccine and close to another 1,500 in the process of being approved. To make sure records are kept accurate, these healthcare providers must enroll with the state's health services department. While the vaccine is only in medical facilities right now, soon it will be in doctor's offices, pharmacies, and other healthcare facilities. CVS, Walgreens, and HEB announced they will participate in a federal program for COVID-19 vaccine distribution when it becomes more available to the general public. That will likely be in the spring. Another question many people have had is how much will it cost? Pfizer and Moderna struck a deal with the government to fund and provide 100 million doses each. The CDC says vaccine doses purchased with our taxpayer dollars will be given to the American public for free. But vaccine providers will be able to charge fees for administering the shot to someone. So keep that in mind. Check out KSAT.com for the latest coverage on the COVID-19 vaccine in South Texas. RJ Marcus, KSAT 12 News. Time check, 6.15. Let's go ahead and check traffic with Officer Nick Solis. A lot of green on the screen. Yes, Steph, a lot of green on the screen right now. Things look good uh, all around the city. No construction, no accidents. If you're headed to work, expect a smooth ride, and you got time to put some gas because things look good. Let's go straight to Transguide right now. 10 at Woodlawn, looking good there on the west side. 10 at Days of Vala, looks great on the northwest side. 90 at Zalzamora, flowing smooth. I-10 west at 1604 near UTSA. That looks good, but does get backed up in those eastbound lanes at this time. And 410 at Broadway on the northeast side looking great. Thank you, Nick. Uh, Mike, I'm having bus stop uh, flashbacks this morning to those chillier mornings uh, oh, yeah. before getting on the bus over to Coronado Village Elementary in Universal City. 
Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, but, but at least the bus was mm-hmm. probably warmed up. By Very the time warm. You got oh, by the time it got to me, it was plenty warm. <laughs> yeah, so make sure you do warm up the bus a, a little bit and warm up your car a little bit because uh, temperatures will probably drop down a couple more degrees here in town. Right now we are at uh, 37, but uh, we're looking at uh, 35 degrees and then 57 for a high temperature. So, yeah, it is going to be on the cool side later on today, but plenty of sunshine. Just a spectacular day. All right, <laughs> this got a couple of really great KSAC Connect pictures, some of the decorations here, and this is Frosty on a jet ski. You don't see that too often, and wait to see the one next half hour. That's going to be a good one, what Santa is, uh, his sleigh's riding in in that decoration. Uh, right now, beautiful view of downtown, 37 here in town. We do have some freezing readings around there, and uh, just because it's just above freezing, Kerrville Comfort, Balverde, your backyard probably is freezing as of right now. The wind, which was just howling overnight, has definitely settled down about 5, 10 miles per hour, and uh, there is a little bit of a wind chill, though. 20 is what it feels like in Kerrville, 25 in Lost Maples and Randolph. Your wind chill right now is at at uh, 27 degrees. We don't have any clouds out there. Uh, we had some yesterday, of course, and then things cleared out very, very nicely. And we're going to keep a lot of sunshine around for the next couple of days. Then we get into Friday and Saturday. Friday, we will see the clouds increasing throughout the day. I don't think we see anything as far as any precipitation. Then we go into the overnight hours into Saturday. And this model does have a couple little sprinkles around here, but most of the rain is going to be confined well off to the east throughout the morning hours on Saturday. And that's only going to be the first portion of the day. Then we are going to be uh, clearing out maybe one or two leftover clouds around here. We've got a great stretch of weather in behind that, but going into the first part of the week may start to see a couple of more clouds try to work their way in here, especially by Tuesday and Wednesday. As far as that big storm system, boy, this thing is a doozy. It's covering most of uh, about the eastern, say, quarter of the country as of right now. Snow, freezing rain, a lot of rain. It's going to continue to work its way up to the north. They're expecting uh, to be measuring that with yardsticks, foot, foot and a half, maybe two feet of snow when it's all said and done. So this is the low that is racing across the country. <clears throat> Excuse me. And in behind it, it's what has helped to pull in the front overnight and obviously not close enough to really do anything as far as any precipitation for us. We stay cool, especially tomorrow morning. It's going to be downright cold because we won't have the wind to deal with and the kind of the, the heart of the colder air is going to be settling in here overnight. And that's why we're going to be down around freezing tomorrow morning. Then on Friday, we get a bit of a warm up here. It's not going to be any any surge in temperatures. It'll stay a little bit milder as far as lows are concerned. Uh, Friday into Saturday just because of the extra moisture around here. Then that next front sort of moves on in here. Going into the first part of next week, it is going to be a little bit on the milder side and then another big low is going to be developing out here and this one notice how there's more arctic air kind of dropping in here that one looks like it's going to be dropping a fairly decent chunk of cold air by the latter part of next week and right now it looks like it should be arriving by uh, christmas eve 51 degrees today at noon sunny skies good looking day keep a jacket handy though 57 for a high temperature, so we are going to be almost 10 degrees below normal, kind of like what we were on Monday. And then tomorrow we get down to 30. It is going to be cold tomorrow morning and nice big warm up. We double that up to 62. More clouds developing on Friday. They'll increase throughout the day. 50 starting off on Saturday, so much milder and a couple of showers during the day. Then we are going to see temperatures really not bad the first part of next week. And of course, Monday is the official start of winter. But it's really going to feel like it tomorrow morning. Yeah, tomorrow down to freezing is going to be really cold, but it's that dry cold. Unlike yesterday morning where it was mm -hmm. that really damp chill. No, mm -hmm. tomorrow's going to be that, that dry cold, so it's going to feel really good. Are we ready? Yes. Yes, we'll take we're it. ready. Jackets, gloves, and scarf. And scarf, yes. Right. Good idea. Thank you very much, Mike. Right now, 620, 37 degrees. You're watching GMSA. As the transition between administrations is underway, ABC's Robin Roberts sat down with Vice President-elect Kamala Harris for a one-on-one -on -one interview. We're going to hear an excerpt in today's GMA First Look. Here is your secret word of the day. Enter it on ksat.com slash circle K for a monthly chance to win free gas for a year. Every entry wins a medium coffee. Win with Circle K and GMSA. Pampers, the number one pediatrician recommended brand, helps keep baby's skin dry and healthy. 
so every touch is as comforting as the first. Pampers, the number one pediatrician recommended brand. In 1912, Leon L. Bean sold his first batch of 100 boots, 90 of them leaked. He refunded every pair and then perfected them. Because if it wasn't comfortable, he didn't want people to have it. This holiday season, we want to help you give the warmest, coziest, longest lasting gifts on earth and make you feel more comfortable than you have in a long, long time. Doing what we love can be painful. Introducing Asper Cream with Essential Oil. Now calming lavender oil is combined with fast-acting lidocaine for lasting relief. New Asper Cream with Essential Oil. Hi, I'm Robin Roberts in Washington, D.C. on the campus of Howard University. Just wrapped up my interview with Vice President-Elect Kamala Harris. This is her beloved alma mater. Here's your GMA first look. I think people are going to be very encouraged to hear what you said that Mitch McConnell and Joe Biden have spoken. He yeah. has acknowledged yeah. that he is the president-elect. Yeah. How important do you think that is? I think it's critically important. I applaud Mitch McConnell for, for talking to Joe Biden today. You know, it would have been better if it were earlier, but it happened. And that's what's most important. And so let's move forward. Let's move forward and where we can find common purpose and common ground, let's do that. So there you have it, just a sneak peek of my interview with the Vice President-elect, and you can see much more of my interview coming up on GMA. Welcome back, 625. Spurs still working out the kinks in the preseason after another loss to the Houston Rockets last night. Silver and Black had a strong first quarter, putting up 31 points, but turnovers and poor three-point shooting plagued the team the rest of the way. First-round pick Devin Vassell logged 32 minutes, scoring 11 points with a few rebounds. He also uh, helped on the Spurs on defense, which is, was historically bad last season. Rockets going to win 112-98, but some of the players are still positive about the upcoming season. If there's an open shot, take it. Um, is there, if there's an open drive, take it. Uh, whenever you see the open man that's next to you, even if you're open, you know, from good to great, you know, that's just the Spurs way of basketball. That's just the Spurs way of playing. So, you know, every single time I'm trying to be aggressive because the more aggressive I am, the easier it is for my teammates to have open shots. And, you know, um, we're all happy. Spurs play their final preseason game tomorrow. Once again against the Rockets, you can watch it on KMYS, which is the CWA station here in San Antonio. Tip-off scheduled for 7 o'clock in Houston. Regular season starts a week from today in Memphis against the Grizzlies. Today is also National Signing Day for high school football players. Right now on KSAT.com, a list of San Antonio players and where they are choosing to go play their college ball. First signing period starts today, runs through the 19th. Another signing period will happen coming up in February as well. And good luck, gentlemen. Definitely good luck. Time now, 626 and 37 degrees for now. Congress may be closer to a new coronavirus stimulus bill. We'll see how both sides of the aisle are working on a compromise. Bear County Sheriff's Office is trying to solve a case involving a deadly hit and run crash. I'm Katrina Weber, I'll have that story. Coming up, the latest on the vaccine and when to expect another vaccine to be approved by the FDA. I'm Andrew Dimbert in Washington, D.C. with the very latest. It's chilly out there this morning, going to be even colder tomorrow morning. We'll check in with Mike on that in a moment as we see the very beginning of our Wednesday morning sunrise. Yeah, and there on the banner kind of gives away what could be happening around here for the next uh, couple of mornings. Hi, good morning. It is Wednesday, December 16th. Thank you for joining us today. And yes, definitely grab the jacket this morning. Uh, it said Hill Country freeze, Mike. Is that tonight already happening right now in some places or is this more tomorrow morning? Well, tomorrow morning, yes. It's going to be pretty widespread as far as freezing. We do have a couple of freezing temperatures out there right now thanks to, uh, well, that front that moved through overnight with those windy conditions. And boy, those those winds were just howling overnight, and this is what is left on the heels of all that. Just beautiful, beautiful weather, and we had some uh, winds that were gusting, oh gosh, I'd say about uh, 20, 25 miles per hour or even stronger than that in the overnight hour, but not bad as of right now. And as you can see, we've got, uh, well, airplane going off to 
places who knows where. And right underneath the banner, that is the uh, the planet Venus. And you get a better view right here. Boy, it's a gorgeous view. 22 is the dew point. So really, really dry air. We've got no wind to speak of as of right now and those clear skies. So that is actually going to allow temperatures to drop down a couple of more degrees when it's all uh, said and done. And out to the west, we've got temperatures close to freezing. So this means with Hondo at 33 in your backyard, it probably is freezing. 34 Uvalde and uh, Del Rio at 38. Carrizo Springs, 41 degrees. It's going to be interesting to see what the updated mountain cedar count has in store once uh, that takes into effect uh, all the winds or how that affected those mountain cedar trees in the overnight hours throughout the rest of today. Sunny, coolish, only mid to upper 50s. So keep a jacket handy. Freezing start tomorrow as I was talking about. Then sunny and we get up into the uh, low 60s tomorrow and then we'll have some increasing clouds Friday. Maybe a sprinkly shower over the uh, early morning hours of Saturday. Then we're going to be clearing out and going to be on, kind of on the mild side to ring out fall because winter officially begins Monday morning. Will it feel like it? Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Here's Officer Nick Solis. What's going on, sir? Well, Mike, right now we're dealing with one accident here, but we also have some uh, heavy traffic build up here. It's going to be northbound north Loop 1604 going towards 35 there in the Converse area. Expect a little bit of a traffic delay as traffic's backed up there. All right, accident right now. Southbound IH10 at Callahan Road. This is a one vehicle accident where vehicles turn the wrong way of traffic. SAPD is on scene, not causing any traffic build up yet, but just keep it in mind if you're heading in that direction. Trans guide right now. 30 seven at Jones in the southeast side flowing very smoothly looking good I 10 at West Avenue that looks good as well. Well, speaking of I-10, our Samuel King is here to tell us about some construction uh, on I-10. Now, what's going on, Sam? Yeah, we've had this construction out there on, on the northwest side uh, throughout the week, and this is going to be another uh, incident here. Bernie Stage to Dominion this afternoon. We had some closures this week. We're going to have some more closures on the westbound side here. Full closure from Dominion Drive to Bernie Stage from 9 tonight to 5 a.m. tomorrow morning. All traffic is going to be detoured to the frontage roads. TxDOT says it's installing the wiring for the TransGuide signs you see around town. This is all part of that I-10 expansion project that's been going on for a few years. TxDOT actually tells me construction is substantially complete, but there'll still be some work here or there through February. Mark, Stephanie? Thank you, Samuel. Bear County Sheriff's investigators seem to have their work cut out for them when it comes to solving a deadly hit and run crash. They say they haven't found any real witnesses to the crash, which happened in Northeast Bear County last night. Our Katrina Weber is live near downtown with that story. Now, Katrina, have they had any luck in identifying the man who was killed? As far as we know, they either have not identified him or have not notified his family, but deputies were able to tell us that that man was in his 50s. Now, the crash happened in Northeast Bear County in the middle of a neighborhood. Someone hit that man near the corner of Winsford and Oldham around 930 last night, then kept going. Deputies attempted to do CPR, but the man died. They also had a hard time trying to find any witnesses to the crash. The deputies told us that they did find one person who seemed to have seen part of it, but that person wasn't able to offer any real information, including a description of the car that hit the man. Reporting live near downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. 635 right now. A third full day of vaccinations is underway, and a second potential vaccine could be given emergency approval by week's end. Meanwhile, the number of coronavirus-related deaths are spiking, and the country recorded nearly 1.5 million new cases last week. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has more. And good morning. All along, medical professionals have said since the pandemic reached the U.S. that it would really take a vaccine to truly turn the corner. Well, one is here and another potentially on the way by the end of the week. This as the devastating toll from the coronavirus is expected to grow in the coming weeks. After those historic first shots, more vaccines arrive at hospitals across the country. In hard-hit El Paso, Texas, the University Medical Center welcoming the arrival of nearly 3,000 doses. At least 47 states have already started vaccinating healthcare workers, with Oregon, Arizona, and Tennessee handing out their first shots by Thursday. Vaccine deliveries expected to expand even further in the coming days, with patients in 1,100 nursing homes getting their shots by next week. And this week, a second vaccine from Moderna could be authorized by the FDA. The government ready to ship out millions of doses the moment it gets approval. We know that uh, we're going to ship just a little bit 
uh, short of six million doses out to the American people, uh, and we're shipping it to 3,285 locations uh, across the country. For those on the front line, it can't come soon enough. This moving photo showing healthcare workers at New York's Presbyterian Hospital holding hands in solidarity, ready to receive their shots together. The unprecedented nationwide vaccine program comes as hospitalizations from COVID-19 are reaching record levels. And experts say the numbers will likely get worse in the coming months. And in the next wave of vaccinations, first responders, teachers, and food workers, followed by people over the age of 65, and then it'll go to those with pre-existing conditions. Andrew Dimber, ABC News, Washington. On Capitol Hill, top congressional leaders say a deal on a coronavirus stimulus bill, stimulus bill is close. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell and Minority Leader Chuck Schumer said both parties are close on a compromise. That includes an extension of jobless benefits, small business loans, and money for vaccine distribution. An announcement could come before Congress leaves for the holidays at the end of the week. The United States Postal Service says it's overwhelmed right now. It says there is an unprecedented amount of packages and a limited number of employees due to the pandemic. The Postal Service asking people to send holiday packages and cards as soon as possible to avoid items arriving after Christmas. And it comes as meteorologists are tracking what they call one of the biggest winter storms in years in the Northeast, which could impact deliveries. President Donald Trump has appointed Jeffrey Rosen as acting attorney general for the remainder of his term. Rosen's been a deputy attorney general to outgoing AG William Barr. The White House says Barr's final day is December 23rd. President-elect Joe Biden will announce his nominee for attorney general and once confirmed that person will take over for Rosen. A judge ruled the Trump Organization has to turn over documents to the New York State Attorney General. Those documents are related to a property President Trump owns in the state. An investigation has been going on since 2019. President Trump's former attorney, Michael Cohen, told Congress that the president inflated the value of his assets to get favorable loans and insurance coverage. The Department of Energy rolled back water flow restrictions on showerheads and other appliances. New policy comes after President Trump complained about low flow shower heads and toilets for months. Also impacts the amount of water and energies that washing machines use. Environmental groups are criticizing the changes and urging President-elect Joe Biden to go back to the old regulations when he takes office. President-elect Joe Biden is facing pressure to end the federal death penalty on day one of his administration. Federal executions were on hold for 16 years until the Justice Department revived them last July. More than three dozen congressional Democrats sent a letter to President-elect Biden yesterday. Biden has pledged to abolish the federal capital punishment as part of his criminal justice reform. CNN is reporting the president-elect will name Gina McCarthy as his White House climate czar, making the former head of the EPA his top domestic climate coordinator. McCarthy currently serves as head of the Natural Resources Defense Council. Biden plans to prioritize the climate crisis as president. McCarthy expects to work closely with former Secretary of State John Kerry, who was named Biden's special presidential envoy for climate. Meanwhile, CNN reports that former Michigan Governor Jennifer Granholm will be nominated for Biden's energy secretary. The former governor of Michigan was a key advisor on Biden's campaign team and helped him prepare for debates. Biden's energy secretary could be responsible for spending $2 trillion on clean energy projects. If nominated the cabinet position, Granholm would need to be approved by the Senate. And Pete Buttigieg is Biden's choice for transportation secretary. The former mayor of South Bend, Indiana, Democratic presidential candidate, would be the first openly gay cabinet secretary in history if Buttigieg is confirmed by the Senate. The role of transportation secretary is expected to play a central role in the president-elect's push for a bipartisan infrastructure package. And time now is 640 and 37 degrees for now. Glad you're with us here on GMSA. When it comes to a child's brain development and early learning, the more interaction, the better. After the break, we'll hear what a researcher says about a child's first teacher and the impact on development. This is not just a playground. It's a place where kids learn language, directions, and social skills. But who leads the charge when it comes to playful learning? It's, it's a different kind different of, kind of play, play. I think. I, I'm like the rough 
fun dad, and, and she's the, the heartwarming mom. <laughs> <laughs> Natasha Cabrera is a child development specialist at the University of Maryland. She studied the influence of different caregivers on the academic skills of more than a thousand kids from two parent households. The kids were enrolled in child care at the age of two. Scientists conducted parent and child assessments when the children were two, four, and then five years old. The findings suggested that kids received the most stimulation from their child care providers, followed by mom, then dad. This is the first study to include fathers. Cabrera says dad's activities with two-year-olds were associated with higher scores for kids reading and math at age four and five. Dads, when they're reading a story or a book, they're saying, hey, three more pages to go and then you're done. Let's count how many ducks are on the page. The researchers say the findings support the idea that kids benefit when multiple caregivers provide cognitive stimulation. Cabrera says with many kids at home right now, parents may want to incorporate more more language and learning into daily routines. You know, maybe you're reading the newspaper out loud. Maybe you're reading the comics. Maybe you're singing. And the study findings also support the theory that when parents provide higher levels of stimulation at home, children will have more of a benefit from their child care activities. Let's check in with Officer Nick Solis from SAPD. It is 645. Good morning, Nick. Thanks, Mark. Right now, look at that screen. That tells the story there. Things look good. A lot of green on the screen. Have a little bit of heavy pockets of traffic in and around the city, including northbound 1604 and this right here. This is going to be southbound 281 from Bolverde Road to 1604. We're getting that usual traffic build up there. You can see right at the top of the screen, we have there uh, heavy traffic and then northbound's looking good. So 1604, uh, I mean, from 1604 northbound 281 to Bolverde, eight minutes, other way, nine minutes, a little bit of traffic there. 35 and 410 looking good. 10 at ProBent, starting to pick up a little bit on those eastbound lanes, that's normal. And we'll do one more here, 10 at Callahan East, where we had that accident, looking good now. Looks like that accident's all cleared up. Thank you, Nick. Mike's got a KSAC Connect picture from way over uh, towards the Houston area in Montgomery. The last half hour we showed you Frosty on the, uh, the jet ski, and now there's Santa Claus in a Corvette. And you can barely make out the uh, kind of bubble rear window there. My guess is that's a 25th anniversary, a 78 Corvette. It's a good looking car. Yeah, very um, nice. And Santa doesn't get tickets. That's no. just, just wrong. <laughs> yeah, that's a really with the T top. The 78 with the T tops there. Nick, you wouldn't pull over Santa, would you? You know, you know, there, there's every, everyone's same in my book, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> We love you, Nick. <laughs> Does that mean everybody should give you a present? Anyway. Uh, look at the sunrise out there. Just spectacular. And boy, it was, a, it was an interesting night with those winds at times gusting close to 40 miles per hour out there at the airport. The wind has finally settled down and we have some very, very dry air in place right now. And that's going to be the case throughout the day today as well as tomorrow morning. And this is when, because we're not going to have, we'll get kind of the cooler air settling on in here. We won't have any wind at all to deal with. And so we're really setting up up for the coldest morning tomorrow going to be down right around uh, 30 degrees. But then notice how the uh, flow comes in here off of the Gulf of Mexico out of the southeast, and that's going to increase the humidity. And so dew points are definitely going to be going up throughout the day on Friday overnight into Saturday. We won't be anywhere near as cool Saturday morning, and then we'll also have a chance for a couple of showers around here. I wouldn't really get too excited about that chance of rain. So back to the dew points. Here it is on Friday. And then Saturday, we have another kind of uh, weak front moving on through. It's just basically going to get rid of the humidity and get us back down to some cooler low temperatures, but we'll still be on the mild side. And then notice how the humidity does tend to increase there as we go into the middle part of the week. And that then is preceding another much more potent front as things are shaping up right now. I know it's still a week away, but there's a pretty good front that's going to be moving through here. Looks like right around Christmas Eve, and that'll knock temperatures down. Satellite picture right now, or excuse me, the uh, forecast. There's the clouds that come in here Friday into Saturday. Again, maybe a couple of sprinkly showers. Uh, most of that would be off to the east. There's the next front that kind of slides on through here. And that huge storm complex, this is the one that's really going to be pounding. Great Lakes, Ohio Valley up to the northeast throughout the rest of the day today as well as tomorrow. So definitely uh, check ahead if you got any travel plans with that. And then, like I said, going into next week, we've got that next big front coming through here. 
just about uh, looks like Thursday during the day sometime next week. 51 degrees today at noon, sunny skies and uh, just a really beautiful day. Beautiful blue skies out there. 57 for a high temperature today, so it's going to be more like what it was on Monday with temperatures about 10 degrees below normal and then get ready for tomorrow because we are going to be starting off right around freezing. We double that up to 62 degrees. More clouds come in here during the day on Friday and then Saturday there is that chance for and just a shower or two in the morning hours and temperatures will be mild Saturday morning. Then we kind of get rid of that humidity just in time for the beginning of winter, which is going to be about four o'clock in the morning on Monday morning. So chilly start, but then a warm afternoon, but it looks like pretty potent front coming in here by next week. Hey, not a bad looking forecast. Nope, not at bad. all. We'll be listening closely next week. Yes, indeed. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mike. 650 right now, 37 degrees. And a good night's sleep is important for children so they don't get cranky. Oh, yes, it is. But it can also help prevent obesity. Tomorrow on GMSA, we're going to take a look at the latest sleep science. And before we go to break, back outside with live cam on your early Wednesday morning. Beautiful start to the day. And you're starting your day the right way by watching GMSA. and left for dead. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. Sheriff's deputies say that was the situation for a man in Northeast Bear County, that man hit by a car. They're still trying to track down the driver who hit him around 9.30 last night near Winsford and Oldham Road. Deputies who responded to the scene tried to perform CPR on the man, but he still died of his injuries. Investigators are trying to find out more about what happened, but so far they say they have not found any witnesses to the crash and they don't have a description of the car that was involved either. Reporting near downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Coming up today on GMS 8 9, many small businesses rely on the holiday season for a big part of their yearly profit. That's especially true this year, since many businesses had to close their doors amid the pandemic. Max Massey shows us how one local shop has made adjustments as they get ready for Christmas shoppers. That's at 9 after Good Morning America. Well, we also want to remind you that holiday season is here in South Texas, and what would it be without tamales? Right, SA Live's Christmas primetime show is all about celebrating gifts in 2020, and Delia's Tamales is definitely a gift to San Antonio this year. The business made its way to San Antonio this summer, and the long lines haven't stopped since they opened their doors. This Friday on SA Live's primetime Christmas show, you're going to hear from the matriarch of the family business herself, showing how hard work and family helps to build the foundation of this thriving business that has a cult following. Plus, you still have time to order from this hotspot for Christmas, but the deadline is getting close. So be sure to watch this Friday, KSAT 12, 7 p.m. for all the details, plus music, crafts, and an up-close look at people in our community making a difference for the better. Now let's go ahead and take one last look at the roads with Officer Nick Solis. Thanks, Jeff. Right now, if you are headed to work right now, you got time to stop for tamales because things are looking good out there. Look at 35 and 410 flowing real smooth right now. We also have 10 at Proband looking good. We got I-10 at Crossroads there, North Central looking great. 10 at Woodlawn on the west side, that looks good as well. Just drive safe, everyone. Wear your seatbelt and uh, two hands on the steering wheel. Mike? I had a chance to see that story about the Dahlias the other day, and it, it's a very good story hearing from the major. Busy place. Yes, yeah. All right, beautiful start this morning. It is gorgeous out there. It's cold as well. 35 here in town. A lot of freezing temperatures out there. There's a hint of a breeze still. Not as much as what it was uh, overnight, but feels like 31 at the airport, 27 at Randolph as of right now. Gorgeous day today, 57 for a high temperature. All right, from our morning family to yours, make it a great Wednesday. That's right. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you back here at 9.